somebody else, I don't know. If it can help somebody, then good. Doesn't matter to me. If he told me she's alive, she's never, you're never gonna sit on her back again, totally fine. I'm currently video journaling just because at some point, maybe later on, I can show this to somebody and I'll help them. Life just isn't super fair. I think that you can be happy and still be going through really bad stuff at the same time because that's what I'm experiencing. I'm happy and still going through a shit storm and I didn't know that this was a thing. Um, 11 days before my horse got rushed into surgery, my mom was diagnosed with advanced cancer and only a small amount of people know it and me and Alex were headed to go to see baby Flo in surgery and my mom has been rushed into emergency. Turn on back uh, so uh, we can see the head. Come to me, Carol, so we can see your face. It feels so good to know that all of the things and all of our Jesus coins and all of our prayers paid off. The phone call I got right after I got off of the Rodeo New York float was from Dr. Stevens. And he said, I answered it just like, you know, and he said, your mare made it. Um, John sent you a picture of a ball. That was a one pound stone that came out of her stomach. He told me the way that he had to go through. I, I remember I was sitting on a plot of grass and like just looking at Alex and just being like, thumbs up and then I put it on speaker and he was like, she made it and we're just gonna see how she recovers. And he said, just keep praying. And he said, I feel like, you know, if the next few days go well, I've only heard negative things about colic surgery. I've only heard that they, you know, you get them back together and then they fall apart again. I've only heard that like, yeah, but they're not very durable after that. And then you have to do colic surgery multiple times. Like I've only heard really negative things about colic surgery and you know we lost her mom from colic surgery we opened her up and she died right there and so this was at the same exact same age too so to know that she made it through gave me some hope but I definitely didn't feel like we were out of the woods I felt like we were right in the thick of it of trying to figure out what we could do from here I asked him the question, like, what kind of career does a horse like this have? Like, I'm prepared. Like, I will cut a hole in the wall and make her run all the way out to the pasture that has a shelter and, you know, I will put AC and a heater and one stall. Like, I'll do anything so that she will be comfortable for the rest of her days. And he said, if we get through these next few little crucial milestones, she's gonna be back to having a full career. And I was like, I don't even wanna hear that right now. I was like, I I don't even, I can't even think that as positive of a person as I am, that was too much. I was just like, let's, let's keep it real here. Like if the horse is alive and comes home, I'm going to be so thrilled to hug her and put that saddle on her back and take those family portraits. I'll be absolutely thrilled. So we got home from California. Of course, the first thing we did, did when we got off the plane was go to see her. So we're day two out of surgery. I'm at Weems and Stevens. This is where Chuck Taylor was brought um, for all of his surgical needs. If you followed that story, the only reason I'm filming this is because I regret not filming everything with Chuck. So I'm not gonna talk to Baby Flo because I tend to um, give her a lot of adrenaline, like her heart starts racing when she sees me because all she knows is going to big rodeos with me. So we'll be silent and go get an update. Dr. David is headed to go get the stone out of her that they saved. So. 
I get to actually take it home and see like what this thing weighs and just check it out. So this is caused from the soil in North Texas and California. There's two places that this comes from. Um, same thing happened to a horse of Sherry Servies. Has nothing to do with anything other than a soil problem that you can't prevent. So it's unfortunate timing, unfortunate horse that it chose to affect. Um, but I don't ever think there's a right time for something like this, but we're fortunate that day two is good. Oh, okay, so in my car, and I just got the stone that came out of her. Again, this is apparently very common in North Texas issues. So I'm gonna open this up. I shit you not, this thing weighs a pound and a half. Um, it's calcified manure um, along with minerals on top. Um, I'm telling you, it is, it is over a pound. I mean, this thing is absolutely massive. Absolutely massive. I have it on my desk as a reminder that miracles happen, um, which if you know her brother Chuck, we had another miracle with him at the exact same vet clinic. I'm grateful for all the chances I've been given to believe in something way bigger than myself. It's day four and we're off of the IV so far, so that's good news. touch it. Today is day five. I just left Nini in the hospital where we're waiting for her first appointment with her cancer oncologist to get some news. They didn't show up while I was there, so that was a bummer. Um, so now I am headed because this is supposed to be release day for baby Flo, but I haven't gotten a phone call. Normally I get a phone call in the mornings, um, so I haven't gotten one. So I'm about a mile away and I'm just gonna go put my eyes on her myself. There's my sweet girl. We got some swelling on that incision. Um, but that is all normal and no fluids, so we're, we're getting there. I have no idea what I'm recording this for. went to work for a little while after baby Flo and my sister just called me with the news that my mom is stage four there's no stage five <laughs> chemo can slow it down but it can't stop it so that comes into a quality of life thing. Um, do you want her last days spent being zapped and radiated? And I think about, I don't mean to compare my mother to a horse, but when I had Chuck Taylor, I just, um, I should have let go sooner than I did. And I didn't learn that lesson for nothing. So I'm gonna utilize that knowledge here. I don't know who has it better. I don't know. People that have really amazing parents with no story of like, I mean, they're perfect. I'm fortunate. I've had her for 37 years and I'm grateful and I'm not even asking for another year. I'm just asking for some way to deal with this pain. <laughs> All I can think about is my dad. Who's in the love of his life? <laughs> and thinking about if I have a child, she won't get to meet her. Just really selfish stuff. <laughs> uh, maybe I'm just filming this as a catalog for somebody else, I don't know. If it can help somebody, then good. Also, really weirded out that literally not any of us make it out alive. None of us, but it's so shocking every time. Like, why is this such a shock? 
you even hear people say like, if I die, well, like, well, you're gonna die at some point or another. I'm gonna take my own advice here and find myself a grief counselor. One. And of course, because it's who I am, I'm gonna try to find somebody that's got better news that can help her. We won't know for two days if the flu, if it's all over her body or if it's just horrible or if it's gonna take her in the next few days. We don't know any of that. Currently, I can only think of like really selfish thoughts. So, not super helpful. Like, if somebody walks up and says, oh, I'm really sorry about your mom. I've lived every day to be a daughter that they could be proud of and to be somebody that they were really proud to say that they've raised and then taking them with me to as many places as I possibly can because every single time I'm like, one day they won't be here. And so I want them to experience everything with me that they help me accomplish. And that day is here. And social media is really strange because the happiest moments that I have in the breaks of my day, I post and then I try to like post things from psychologists that I follow or psychiatrists that I follow just to let people know like everybody's going through something on this platform. It's not okay for, for the sake of authenticity to go on and expose my mother's medical issues without her consent or while my family is grieving. So I think that's important to respect everything. And I don't wanna put a burden on anybody else that's going through stuff. Like everybody's going through their own thing. We got good news. I'm sure when this was all played together, it's gonna to be this roller coaster of emotion of just. Uh, um, we got good news. We got good news and we got a hurdle. I mean, imagine that. The craziest thing is that we're at a phase where stage four cancer is our good news. So that's that's what we're dealing with. Um, it's stage four A, which me I didn't even know there was letters. Stage four A means it's in one organ and potentially operable. Um, and colon cancer is the best cancer to have. I prefer no cancer, but apparently there is a best cancer to have and mom's got it. So, um, because I guess it's easy to operate on once they find and if it stayed in one place and blah 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 here's the hurdle she's got a chronic cough and fluid keeps filling filling up in her abdomen and nobody knows where it's coming from the main reason and i'm grateful for all all the doctors that are in the hospital but we are in a very general hospital meaning there's not a lot of specialists in so you got a guy next door with a broken wrist and a girl on the other side with pneumonia. And then my mom with stage four cancer that really, really, really needs a specialist. So that's where we're at. Now, I've made some calls. There was like all these different hoops that you have to jump through and have all the right information in order to get into Cancer Treatment Centers of America. She passed all of it. We can get in can't get in until she gets out of this other hospital. Where's the fluid? How do we stop it? She's currently taking more Lasix than an NFR horse and this chronic cough and all of this fluid. Sounds to me like pneumonia, but they're saying the fluid is from somewhere else. I forced her to walk down the hall yesterday. Imagine that. 
I also brought headphones. Would you meditate for a minute? Yeah. Okay. She says because all that fluid when you're laying, just it just settles. Yeah, when you stand up, gravity okay. takes. Proud of you, lady. Come on. She walked and she didn't cough the entire time because she was focused on something else. So today I brought headphones, and today I'm gonna force her to meditate. If she's sitting there, you know, doing nothing anyway, she might as well be listening to some information about how to heal herself or meditate on positive thoughts or a vision to get outside of her own body and go forward. So that's my goal today. Maybe tomorrow I can get her to write some goals down. <laughs> Something else you really miss and you can't wait to get back to. What does that say? Traveling. Traveling. Okay, we're going to do that for sure. Let's see, it's January. So... See what's going on in January. Just going anywhere. Where's somewhere you'd like to travel to? I don't care. I should travel. <clears throat> About New York. Rodeo, New York. That would be a yeah. good one. Write that down. Do you think all wires I'm plugged into? Rodeo, New York day whatever this is january 8th it's gone good so far oh and i get to pick baby flow up from the vet so that's the other good news i could have picked her up yesterday but the vet is the only person that i've told so far that um my mom is in this state so he's his mom he lost his mom to the same thing so or relative same thing so he is very empathetic in that i probably don't need to pick up a horse that's had fresh surgery um, right now. So we've waited until today where we've hit a little bit more level ground. And I said, okay, I'm mentally able to pick her up now and watch her for 24 hours. Now that we've gotten just a, just a, just a smidge of good news. I'm, I'm in that. So January 8th, be good to us, man. Are you excited? Oh, she's hungry. She's eating. She's hungry. She's no, like nothing in here. Let me. I gotta go. I gotta get her some food. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Bye. I don't know. Do we have anything? We have an open bag. Yay! <laughs> she said, "Give me that grain, yeah. though." <laughs> Give me grain now. Is that fresh enough? There's nothing in there. Okay. It's zeroed out. Stay in there with her, go, and I'm gonna um, grab her bag. Okay, Zero. Hey. Oh, we need to take off. You that want line. that? It's a big deal. This is so great. <laughs> she won't drink out of this one, by the way. I thought I was going to lose this lady. There's so many things that went through our mind. I know one day we're gonna have to tell thousands of children, millions, that she's gone, but I'm just not ready at 14 years old. Looking good today. Not ready at 14 to do it. And the vet says he thinks that she's gonna come back like brand spanking new. So I and all of my friends and my husband and my family, we didn't care if she ever runs again. I don't care. Doesn't matter to me. If he told me she's alive, she's never, you're never gonna sit on her back again, totally fine. Okay, what is today? January 10th. Yeah. We're breaking out. We're breaking out. This is a big day because um, I think we are six days out of Baby Flo's um, trip back home. So we are 10 days out of surgery wait 13 12 days out of baby flow surgery all of this has gone just it's just a whirlwind today we got a phone call from cancer treatment centers of america after a lot of badgering that i got mom in they're going to accept her there's a lot of fiery hoops that you have to jump through to get an appointment and 
today they accepted us for Friday. Today is Monday. Um, also, just left Lafayette. I hit a barrel. Tyler Taylor, Dallas, Texas. Let's match us on world champion. Somehow, in retrospect, it all seems really crazy, but my mom wanted to see me on the road rodeoing. She didn't want me to turn out of anything. So I would take one day trips. I would leave Tulsa, come home, see Alex for a couple of days, or Alex would come up to Tulsa. We're staying in the hotel with mom and dad. And um, I ran at Odessa with Flowbot, I, I mean, I just, I ran, made a few runs, Lafayette, Louisiana, Lake Charles, Louisiana. I did terrible. I still have the scar from Lake Charles. I did terrible. John, my trainer, felt really bad for me because he's like, I just feel bad because you've had such a tough month and now your leg's bloody. And I was just like, man, just getting on a horse feels good. Like, it's a break. It's a break and I take it. I'm so excited about it. I get why I did terrible. Um, my brain was fogged up. At this point, I was still thinking that mom was gonna be okay and we were gonna find a treatment and everything was gonna be fine. Every night she and dad would watch a rodeo on the Cowboy Channel. Mom, wave. We're having a better day, right? A lot better. And we're waiting on Cody to get here. She's bringing Flobot by because I'm up at a rodeo tonight at two hours away. So my Uncle Terry has come up to help my dad and mom is having a better day. And I've created a fabulous Mohawk moment for her. <laughs> so it looks good. So she's gonna pet Flobot for good luck and then we will be on our way. Hi baby boy. Isn't he pretty? Here, let me have your finger, mommy. I didn't know how much she loved it and so I would just I'd enter stuff just so she could see me run with her and dad in the hospital and then she would watch and then I would call after the run like everything was normal and then I'd jump a plane back to Tulsa and everybody would hold the fort down here I like was so excited because I'm able to like find some sort of stability through this and like I think when everybody um, when their wo world falls apart I think they just like shut down every aspect of their life to try to s cope or self heal and I'm like running a science experiment on myself of like can I keep my together like not not pretend can I find a way to self soothe to cope, to have breakdowns, put myself back together. Can I find some sort of calm in the storm? And the answer is yeah. I mean, yeah, it's been like roller coaster of emotion moment. I mean, I'm obviously like, I woke up and was like, today is the day I don't do makeup. Like, this is just not, that's not my priority. Um, today, I'm going to make sure that I do that for myself tomorrow um, because I, I know how depression works and how when things start to spiral out of control, the first thing to go is like self-care. Not the makeup is self-care, but when you look at yourself and you're just like, Ugh, um, kind of the shit just begins to just downward spiral. So, um, long story short, mom got into the cancer treatment center. That will happen on Friday. So now I will turn out of the AQHA show in Denver because that would happen on Wednesday and then we get home late Thursday. I don't know. It's just not my priority. I would rather go to WPRA tour rodeos. There's one coming up in Buckeye, Arizona. It's 15 hours away. Um, horses are doing really great. So um, Mojo just won reserve derby champion one day, champion the next day. So we Gucci fam. Everybody's good. Um, John took a really big spill yesterday in the race and with Mojo. And so I was like, bro, I thought he broke his leg. I called people there because his wife was at the ranch. And I was like, somebody tell me that guy's leg is not broken and that he's okay. Um, not that your girl doesn't know how to get in there and, 
and get on every horse for him while he recovers. Um, but just like for the sake of everything that everyone is going through. Like, can we just not get a broken limb? Thanks. That'd be great. Today is like, yay, kind of here. And I'm here for it. I'll take it. Oh, but how is the queen, you might ask? Well, we have a new goal. Um, and that is to run Baby Flow at Rodeo New York in June. Ah, she gets to perform at Madison Square Garden. got this so that's my goal that was a C money goal she was like how fun would that be and I was like you brilliant girl you brilliant so I think Miss Thing is gonna get a bath because it's super warm today even though I'm in a sweatshirt um, so I'm gonna give her a little bath I was thinking about my damn story and I was thinking no wonder the haters think this is some scripted movie because nobody really tells the truth online. I mean, even me, like, I'm not gonna show you guys tragedy after tragedy after tragedy. I'm gonna wait till I have some sort of solution before I show you the tragedy because people are too fragile right now. They get too much bad news. They get too much garbage thrown at them. They don't need to process my garbage at the same time. But like, I get back from a broken neck. I train a horse, he gets to win it. He cuts his foot off. I go to Weems and Stevens, get his foot put back on, get some really nice babies out of him, passes away in his own time, lives four years longer than expected. Not the ending that we wanted, but a beautiful ending nonetheless. Fast forward, I go get baby Flo out of the stall the day he gets hurt. I break her to ride, it's a fairy tale. Tragically doesn't make it to the NFR then makes it to the NFR, then fails miserably, then makes a comeback, and wins the world championship, takes a couple of years off, wins an AQHA world championship, everything's going smooth, finds the man of her dreams, boom! Horse tries to die while she goes out of town in the birth of a new decade, mom gets diagnosed with cancer. Are you joking? Are you joking right now? I think that people need to know that there's no smooth sailing. That life is amazing. And every moment that you have five minutes to grab a hold of something and tell it you're thankful. I woke up this morning, said so I'm grateful for this house. I'm grateful for my health. I'm grateful for my husband. I'm grateful that baby Flo is alive. I'm grateful that my mother is alive. And that's the T. The boat is a rockin', but I'm gonna keep being grateful. We're at the vet now. Stitch is out. Day 15, 2020. She looks completely different. So wild. my mom was accepted into the Tulsa Cancer Center. So we had another really hopeful moment of my mom's gonna get cured and we're gonna go in for treatment and it's gonna be so amazing. We made it. 
Um, we got into Cancer Treatment Centers of America in Tulsa. That's a really big deal for us because they have everything right here on site to hopefully help my mom. It's just a little crazy um, how quickly things that used to be one way, way are now another way. <sighs> so quite the adjustment. Um, we're settling in for the night. They actually have like a hotel on site. So that's what we're doing. We are staying here. And at 9.45, we're going to start to get some answers. So that's a beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. And so me and dad loaded up and we got mom in the car and we're headed to Tulsa. We check into our room for the night and go to sleep. And at midnight, my mom wakes up and she needs to go to the restroom. And so I help her to the bathroom. And then she just starts saying some really crazy delusional stuff. And I was just like, are you? Are you, jo are you joking? I can't tell if you're joking. And she was like, who are you? And she just started going to this like really horrible delusions of just having no idea where she was or where we were or who I was. And I, so I called my sister and I said, she's gone bonkers. I, I don't know what this means. I have no medical background. I did not know the implications of how serious her losing it was. So I called down to the front desk and I go, I don't even know how this works or if you guys have a hospital here or like where, how, how does this work? But my mom is here to get just a consultation tomorrow and she's losing it. We're going to go to a consultation and go home. And here she is losing her mind. And I called downstairs and we took her in. They rushed her over to the treatment center. Nobody ever comes in an emergency setting. So they came in like, what's going on? And her blood pressure had dropped. Her heart rate had dropped. Um, swelling on the brain causes delusion. Also when your body crashes like that, causes all sorts of delusions. It was a side effect of her rapidly declining health. And we just didn't know that. And so they wheeled her in. And from that day on, we never got to see her not hooked up to machines. Today we have low hemoglobins, but a better outlook. The craziest part of this whole journey is that gallstones have now been found. Maybe Flo had um, a stone. My mom now has a stone. Baby Flo had some cancer that was cut out. My mom now has the exact same cancer that needs to be cut out. So I can't make this up. <sighs> can't make it up. Time to go try to battle this thing again today. This is Patty. This is Barry. They're really, they're rock stars. <laughs> yeah, I like it. And this is our current speed, and we are far from the room. So, every day, like, just every day just one more thing and I would come in with a clipboard and I would grill those doctors and I would be like what can we do what what can we do better you know what what treatments can we do um so we started to just work through everything after that day the doctors were incredible I mean the entire staff was so incredible and they they got her leveled off and we got to start to look at like, what kind of cancer is this? Where is the cancer? Where can we start to work on her? So she got diagnosed with adenocarcinoma with signet cells, which is a rare colon cancer. The cure rate is like next to nothing. It sucks. Um, but the timing worked out where I could focus 100% on mom because everybody at home was taking care of baby flow. So I could handle this situation. All right, today is January 24th at 3.16 p.m. and we are all in the waiting room. Look at everybody. Everybody's hanging, we are present. So we are waiting for Jessie. She gave birth and had her C-section at like 8.30 this morning, but we haven't gotten to see anybody because she's been out from surgery, so. This is just video proof that I was here for my bestie. Um, but my mom's not doing great. So I've pushed my flight back three times and now I'm to the very last flight that I can take out. So I'm about to have to leave. I have 40 more minutes. I don't know if I get to meet the baby. It sucks, but 
um, more airplanes. Okay, what is today? January 26th. And we're cruising right along. I calculated today just for funsies how much time I've spent in the hospital with my mom. And to this point, we get out an hour of a day. Um, it's been 112 hours so far, which doesn't sound like as much as it should sound like. Um, yeah, yeah. Anybody that's had to take care of anybody, I have a newfound respect for you and your job. Um, I've had a newfound respect for all things human, really, and always surprised by how amazing medical professionals can be and, and how life-saving that they can be. Um, so thank you to medical professionals for putting in the bajillion years of school and going into debt for us and all the medical staff. Um, tomorrow, we're going in for a colonoscopy. Thursday, the day after tomorrow, I'm up at Lake Charles, Louisiana with Sea Money. I've been out of town. We'll talk to you guys about what's been going on. It's pretty dramatic. We'll talk about it later. Um, but I've been out of town. So I flew back in town at 6 a.m. and drove the electric wagon to... Feet, sh 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 drove the electric, electric wagon to the rodeo. And now we're up in the slack tonight and we're probably going to drive the electric wagon all the way back home. And still just trying to play off like everything's okay. I just don't want outside influence in this. I know that everybody, most of the people that follow me are there to support me, but for the 1% that want to give me any negative feedback, like during this time, I'm just not here for it. So I hope this is a lesson for everybody that like, you don't have to be here for it. You can just be private and not let this information out. You're seeing this much later. And after we've had some sort of resolution with this thing. I got a chance to go ride a horse and that's really cool, feeling super guilty because my mom, I've been on the phone all day. My mom took a turn for the worse. It seems like when I leave, not that I'm some guru, but when I leave, things tend to fall apart. And so that is why I try not to leave much even though it's like taking a toll on my mental health. But getting on a plane, coming here, I got up at 4.30 this morning, Landed at 7.15. We drove six and a half hours to Lake Charles. Now we are driving back because I want to finally meet the baby. I still haven't gotten to meet Harlow. And I feel like holding a baby will make my life better. Um, so it says we'll get home at 6.30 a.m. Which will mean I've been up for 26 hours by the time we get home. Um, I don't drive tired. So it's good that I'm in an electric wagon because we have to pull over and like basically sit places for 45 minutes um, as we get a little bit ways down the road. So I will promise my parents, I always have promised them I won't drive tired because we darn sure don't need more problems right now. So I'm going to take tomorrow to meet the baby. I make up songs. It's pretty great. You're going to hear all of them. I make up songs about things. You're a little barrel racer, maybe you're a tattoo artist. Maybe you play the bass guitar. <laughs> or maybe you drive a NASCAR. Seven Look at that look she gave me. <laughs> she side She's side-eyed bad. Like, she goes. The sun ran with the hair. Yeah. I'm a neurobiologist. Yeah. <laughs> but now you could drive. <laughs> <laughs> and then maybe take, go back to Tulsa on Saturday. My dad's getting really concerned that I'm taking so much time away from my career and my businesses, but I have incredible people around me. Through this process, I always try to find a lesson. I don't know, I've just been able to get strong. I still panic and cry at certain times and then get it back together, but my ability to bounce back and be resilient about crying is getting faster. So, I don't know, it's tough to watch my dad watch his wife go through this. That's a perspective. I didn't expect to have. Baby Flo is healing really nicely on the flip side of that. And um, yeah, she's healing. I have a camera in her stall. I'm watching her literally at every moment of every day. Um, and she's doing great. So Rodeo New York seems so far away and I know it'll be here like that. 
So today is number 9,000 of flying back and forth between Tulsa and Dallas. I'm landing in Dallas. I'm trying to spend the weekend with my hubby. And today is actually February 1st, which means that it is Baby Flo's first day to be turned out. It's February 1st and you got a dead up. Yeah. You got a dead up, girl. Yeah, Madison Square Garden is right around the corner, lady. So the countdown is on 29 days until um, she is able to be ridden. My goal when this whole thing started was that I regretted that I had never put her world champion saddle on her and never ridden in it. So that's what I keep envisioning in my mind. I'm so grateful that Alex and Jesse and Cody and John and Josie and everybody else is so amazing to keep helping me put all of these balls in the air and keep them there. So things are looking up-ish. <laughs> up-ish. Um, yeah. Let's go. So I think what I'm going to do is just hold her outside yeah. and let her eat and then just slip the lead rope off so it's not so she doesn't take off running. I was able to turn her out for the first time, like outside. And that was such a big deal. And I got to turn her out and let her play and she was healing and um, ah, it just like felt so good. And he started to tell me, listen, if you wanna lunge her and you wanna start getting her in shape, this mare looks good enough to make a full recovery. And he said, and I remember, it's time to let her have her career back. And I can't wait to see this mare back in action without a one pound rock in her belly. It was incredible feeling. How's it looking? Okay. Whoa. I know, we need to make sure she doesn't aggravate anything. Still. Look good. Uh-uh. What are you doing? I think that's enough playtime. Well then let's walk her around. I have yet to know who exactly needs this series. Maybe it's me, Hill, I don't know. It's February 3rd and I'm headed to the same vet that worked on Baby Flo. I'm headed with Mojo. It looks like he has suffered dehydration over the weekend because he didn't like the water in Louisiana. I can't make this up. I can't make any of it up. And now, instead of being like, I've always been pretty passive about medical stuff, like mm, whatever, like even tornado warnings. I'm just like, oh, whatever. Um, that's just me as a human, just like super, eh, okay, cool. Um, just because I've had so many things thrown at me at one time that I've learned to keep it cool. This time, I'm going straight to the vet that worked on Baby Flow just because, like, I've had as many punches thrown at a person as I can handle at this point. So, I don't know that I can be as proactive as as I want to be with so many things going on. Um, my mom had an incredible day yesterday, back to a mediocre day today. More procedures, more tests, more CAT scans, more fluid withdrawn. Um, my flight's booked for tomorrow, so I was trying to spend the weekend and today with Alex because I don't want to do damage to my relationships at the same time as everything else is getting hit with shrapnel. So, um, just trying to find a way to keep some sort of, and I know there's no such thing as balance, but just some sort of normalcy, I guess, to this whole situation. In the middle of this character building process, I've learned um, not to just cry and panic. I've learned to instead double check everything double check everything before making the assumption that what someone told me is the truth. 
And so that is now I'm like trust but verify chapter of my life. And I'm not jaded, but I think everybody can see a little tougher exterior. Um, and I'm grateful for that because I'm a person that kind of needed a little bit of a tougher exterior. I'm still kind, I'm still hopeful. Um, I'm not damaged, I am growing. And I think I had to grow some armor in order to do that. So, wish us luck at the vet. So, John is on the road with the Futurity Colts making sure that everybody's staying solid. He takes Mojo and a bunch of other horses to a race and he calls me with, something's wrong with Mojo. Something's wrong. Like, he's jumping all over me. Last night when I put him up in the stall, something wasn't right. I said, you know what, Just let's just skip. Let's go take him to the vet. Um, so we took him to the vet right down the road. No luck. I said, take him to David Stevens. <sighs> we take him to David Stevens. John takes him down there. And he said, this horse is choking. He apparently ate a bunch of shavings in his stall, which later on is why we like, if we can find dirt stalls, we're going to put them on dirt, <laughs> not, not on shavings. Mojo had eaten all these big flake shavings and it had blocked his esophagus and this airway completely. He was hallucinating from lack of oxygen. The whole right side of his face looked like he had Bell's palsy. It was like drooping and it was so bad. Here we go. I can't imagine watching this vlog back because it's just one thing after another. It's like... I set aside three hours a day to work or go on social media so that I can take care of my mental health. And I am so happy I do. I have a full-blown raging migraine. I just got the call that my mom has to have exploratory surgery tomorrow. Which isn't a big deal. But it's a big deal if you're not healthy. So, we haven't even had time to celebrate no colon cancer. And I want to be grateful. So like, I can take bad news easier. I'm grateful for that. I don't want to be jaded, but I do want to be strong and stoic. Uh, my dad is not stoic. I got this from him. I know it. Um, Mojo, while we were there, his head dropped to the left and dropped down with no sedation in a really weird way and he said that's a symptom of a neurological case that's pretty bad and he said as long as he doesn't call me for a while it's probably on the up and up and that if he stays on his feet we're doing pretty good if he goes down and becomes recumbent then it gets real and it feels already very real Um, yeah, I'm glad I don't drink because I feel like this would be a time that a person could get really lost in some addiction. Very happy that I don't struggle with those things because I can only imagine going through this and battling that at the same time. February 3rd. You've whipped my ass. Congratulations. I'm going to try again. I'm going to try again. Get knocked down seven, get up eight, right? It's more like get knocked down 27, get up 28. All right. Until tomorrow.
so I'll never forget the timing of this. I was in the, we're in the room in the hospital and we're waiting for the doctor to come out and I get a phone call from David Stevens and he said, if I can't get this horse unblocked, I'm going to have to cut his throat open and we're going to have to do a trach. And um, I said, what does this career look like after that? Just for my own curiosity, not out of greed. I just want to know what, what are we looking at here? I've had all I can take. And he said, yeah, his career's over if we have to do a trach. Like he, you know, he can be a pasture pet kind of, but it's going to be, you know, really low quality of life. I said, okay. I got one little glimmer of hope and Dr. Stevens called me back and he said, somehow, whatever you're doing is working because you got a little break here and his airway has opened and your horse is gonna be just fine. And I was like, we needed just some break, some sort of break. And Nini was asking about Mojo all day. How's Mojo, how's Mojo? I'm like, huh, texting Cody like, I'm really sorry. Your horse might not make it. Perfect. Fourteen nine four five four point nine four five. That's the new leader. I wish I didn't know these dates so well. Um, so February 7th, mom is gonna have an exploratory surgery where they're gonna go in and try to find this cancer. We had gotten a glimmer of hope on February 6th where they said they couldn't find the cancer. They can't find it, they can't find it, it's nowhere. It's a miracle, we can't find it. The doctor came out and he said the reason that we couldn't find the cancer where it was is because the cancer has engulfed her, it's everywhere. And he said it so matter of fact, he was like, there's nothing we can do. It's everywhere. Have a great day. He was a great doctor. He was just trying to be blunt because I was trying to find every nook and cranny to find hope. And he didn't want me to have any. He wanted me to be realistic and start making some plans. We found out last night that my mom has an uncurable, inoperable form of adenocarcinoma with signet cells and masses taking over her left lung. And we have today to possibly 10 days. And that's... I've made up my mind that my mom named me after Dynasty because she wanted to leave one. And I have siblings doing awesome and I'm gonna do my own version of awesome. I get DMs every day from people saying, after my divorce, my life stopped, or after I had kids, my life stopped, or after I lost my dad, my life stopped, and I just, not gonna let that happen because I don't think that that's what she wants. She's still with us right now. We don't have love. Mom has to be intubated. The thing down her throat on a ventilator. They take her back to the room. We're losing her. So we call the family together. She takes the ventilator out of her throat for just a, a moment that the nurse took it off and she said, I want to go home. And this is the funniest story. I took it uh, metaphorically <laughs> that mom wanted to go home. And I was like, okay. And so I went and got a nurse and I was like, what, what do you do if a parent tells you that they, they're ready to go? And she said, you let them go. And I said, I'm not ready for that. And she said, if she tells you she's ready to go, you need to make sure that she, you know, 
So the funny story is she told me she wanted to go home. She took every single one of us. You don't have to share anything you don't want to share. Thank you. She just took each one of us in individually and gave us a job, a duty, something that we had to do. She left me an eight page list, <laughs> stuff around the ranch at dad's house. Um, we will be working on that till I die. So <laughs> she said, you have to take care of your dad. She took us all in every single one of us. She gave away possessions and told each one of us what she wanted us to have and what she wanted us to do. And then she said, I want to go home. And so I visited with the nurse and took it metaphorically and we took the ventilator off of her and she began to panic. <laughs> And she started panicking on her oxygen and she took her oxygen mask off and she goes, I don't mean to see you, Jesus. I mean, I want to go home to my home. And I was like, oh my God, I almost killed my mother. <laughs> and I took it metaphorically and she actually literally wanted to go to her home, Ponder, Texas. She wanted to go home. So I brought the nurse in there, we had a good laugh, and I was like, Mom, I'm so sorry. We brought the nurse in and I said she wants to go to her home, and she was like, you can do that. We're going home. You gotta rent a U-Haul or an RV or something to put her in, to take her home, and we have to sign this paperwork so that if you get pulled over, God forbid she passes on the way, which was a high possibility, we weren't doing good. My mom just woke up. I'm just calling it God. She wants to go home. We can take her in an RV. Here you go, Mom. Let's go home. It's finally 9 a.m. and the RV, we made it to Marietta, Oklahoma. And I think she's just hanging on long enough to see her home and her horses, the new baby that was born. I don't think we got a lot of time with her now, but we're gonna do everything we can to get her home. That's been her only request. So, <sighs> just a few minutes now. And then we had a full born, which I can't wait later in life to see what she does. And she named her Golo, Lolo's first baby, um, by Shawnee Buglio, Golo. And so she got to see the baby and she named her. And we had flowers and balloons all in the house and she loved it. Well, we're nearing the end now and it's a little easier to talk about. I found a new level of strength through this process. I don't know that I wanted to find this strength, um, but I think it'll be really cool to rebuild. This is part of life. And unfortunately, you know, cancer is not every person's part of life, but going through this has done a lot of character building and made us all um, closer and really road tested my husband to see what he's made of. He is one of the most decent, amazing human beings through this process that I've truly ever been around in my life. And I'm honored to be married to such a human. My best friends have done the most perfect balance of keeping the wheels moving and just letting me process. And my God, is that just the biggest gift a person could ever give someone um it's just a gift um we're at the end in my mind mom left last week and um we had some fun times our family for sure deals with things through work and humor so if you see me don't bring this up let me deal with it through work and humor because your girl is just done crying. I'm done with it. I'm teared up. I'm done with it. I'm sick of it. I'm over it. I don't want to do this anymore. I want to move on, help my dad heal. Let us all heal as a family. Realize that this is, you know, part of this process. It's crappy and hard. In every single struggle I've ever been a part of, I've built so much character and been able to find a new layer of myself 
I just know that this life is really short. I'm super excited that my family has been so great to each other and so amazing. And we got to get back to work and honor mom in that way because she knows and she didn't want me to turn out of San Antonio. And I told my dad, I was like, dad, it takes a special kind of asshole to leave your mom on her deathbed just because she wanted me to go. That's just not, sorry, mom. We got more rodeos later. Uh, so the strength building process, I'm really excited about getting back to because pulling out this level of strength, girl, um, Mojo gets to come home from the vet today. So we're super excited about that. Her and dad got to watch rodeos every night. And then on February 10th at like 10 30 PM, Alex gave her a kiss on the forehead and we looked over and we literally watched her take her last breath. Dad had gone to bed. I texted Jesse and Cody and said she's gone. And I went and got dad and I said, I'm so sorry, she's gone. And we just hugged and prayed and cried as a family, but I just never knew a person's body emotionally could go through that much pain. Mom passed. We knew this was coming. I'm, I think grief hits everybody different. I am ecstatic that she's no longer in pain. So kind of the, the my pain versus her pain is, uh, it's too much pain. So I'm just gonna have to get over it. Um, I'm able to be super strong. I think that grief changes you forever. Um, I didn't know I was the strong one. I hate having to console everyone else. I wish they'd get their shit together. I've never really lost anybody that close to me. I've lost grandparents, but like this was just like, she gave me instructions. I will live my life living those instructions out. Um, we even got to laugh and smile after she passed. I think that maybe that's hard to wrap your mind around if you haven't been through something like this, but your body literally like, ugh, it can only take so much. She told me I had to wear something flashy for her funeral. She told me right where she wanted to be buried. So I wore sequins on her funeral, which I thought was horribly inappropriate, but Nini was like, you have to wear something whatever. So anyway, the funeral was beautiful. The family came together. Everybody was just so kind and so wonderful to us. And um, she wanted us to be snatched for the funeral. I, I hated every minute of it. It was horrible. It was awkward. It was uncomfortable. And the only thing I could try to look forward to was the recovery of baby Flo. It's time to pick up dad and it's time to pick up the pieces. And what we're looking forward to right now is Rodeo New York. It's time to get baby Flo back ready. And we have, what is today, the 12th? We have 17 days until we can start that process. 17 days. I've also seen Harlow once, which is super, ugh. Um, so we're gonna do a better job of that. So during this time, I still needed to vlog. I still needed to do stuff. We still needed to like, inspire people and give them some hope. I'm talking, we dug down deep. Now I'm headed out to try to go to a rodeo and make myself feel normal. Not let any Flomies think that we're devastated. So Park City, here we come. Ugh, the DMs of kids that don't understand. So I'm not mad at them, it just was like, I'm being pressured by an eight-year-old child right now of like, we want to see more of baby flow on your Insta stories. And I'm just like, Ugh! I remember taking a picture like I was petting her and I had my hand over the IV square that had been shaven. And so I had this like mauve sweater on and just took a picture just to try to let, in my own way, let people know that she's here and she's safe and she's good because like the one thing about my following is that 
You're not gonna fool anybody. Everybody knows exactly who I am. They know exactly where my heart is. They know when stuff is wrong. They know when stuff is going really well. And everybody was starting to sense that something was off. So filming Baby Flo playing outside, we had to be so strategic that her mane was covering or that we only shot her from the right side or that you couldn't see swelling where the incision was or like, you know, put a slinky on her and like whatever. So we were very strategic about that and like filming YouTube videos where I was just trying to, you know, I've never talked on YouTube about losing my mom so before now. So I just tried to keep a little bit of momentum and I gave Cody strict instructions to make me, force me to vlog, like you have to. If I have advice for anybody on grief, do whatever it is that you can do and empower the people around you to make you get as back to normal as you possibly. There's no more normal, there's no, there's a new normal. And you need to be forced to do anything that makes you feel like you are getting back to normal. That's it. That's the, that's the key to all of this is just trying to find normal again. So we just kept posting and kept trying to go live and kept trying to do stories and trying to do all these things and keeping up kind of the charade that everything is okay is really hard to do, but I'm also very, I feel like I've been as transparent as I can be without also depressing people that follow me. I don't want to depress anybody or make you cry without trying to also tell you things are going to be okay and things are going to work out and no matter how much pain that you're going through you're going to feel happiness again you you will feel joy again you will feel connection again you will feel normal again in the moment it doesn't feel like that and there was no way in the world until I felt it that I was going to put that burden on the people around me on the internet the people around me here physically felt it plenty and they had to carry a ton of weight but the people on the internet like there's young girls on there there's young guys on there there's people going through all sorts of things that nobody's hearing them it wasn't for me to put that burden on them without being able to say i found some sort of happiness through all of this well today is the start of nini's projects that she left me a list of and it is beautiful and 79 degrees in February, which is just so strange. I feel like she got with the big man upstairs and said that she wanted it to be a bright, sunshiny day so we could get started and have no delays. Is that how you feel? Oh yeah. Cause it's nice like just gorgeous. Um, so this project is insane. Um, this is my old barn that I started in as a kid and just over time not having horses in it and them needing storage and just years of neglect it's i'd say it's three times the project we thought it was gonna be i'd say four four or five yeah could be it's a lot but it's gonna be awesome yeah it's, it's gonna exciting. it's gonna be so beautiful and so exciting to see my dad see it live back to its glory days and um my dad has requested that um, John, Cody, Jesse, and I all come ride out there um, to use it kind of as an exhibition arena for the Colts. So we'll have banners up and we'll repaint. And um, this is going to take some time for sure to get through. So it's a fun project for us to all work on together. My Uncle Terry and my Uncle Bob, my mom's brothers, came down. One does amazing welding. The other one is an electrician. So um, they pitched in, plus um, the Flomily on Horse Bosses pitched in a large sum of money to help us get everything started. So let's get started. So right after mom passed, I was instructed to get back on the road. 
um, we needed something to believe in. So February 18th, we entered Perry, Georgia. I, in retrospect, like, I can't believe we made it to that rodeo. I remember waking up the hotel and looking at Cody and just like, what am I doing at a rodeo? Um, Poppy needed it, I needed it, we all needed it, just to try to get back to normal. I remember posting on Instagram about my mom passing and then posting like, look, I rode a horse today. A lot of things have been going on in my life. A lot of things have been going on with our horses. So much to tell you guys about and I'm super excited to tell you that later in the year we're gonna have an entire behind the scenes series. This is gonna be a big, long journey. Every single time you've seen me on camera on a horse, that legitimately was the only time I was on camera on a horse. Like, that's the only time I was on a horse. Yeah. Camera, no camera, whatever. And being so proud and like kind of making the barrel pattern and feeling so proud. So we went to Perry, Georgia and we put on brave faces and we practiced at midnight and we, the next night for the rodeo, Lola won like her second pro rodeo check ever. And we just kind of got like, we just got like a little bit of relief. Like we had a little bit of fun and that felt really, really good. Today is a good day because today I get to ride baby Flo again and what's funny about this whole thing is like we're all in so much pain and we're all getting through it and we're all sharing in so much joy with Harlow and baby Flo making it and Jessie went through a ton of things in her pregnancy. Jessie like nearly died in her pregnancy and like all of these things that people just don't know is going on and then you know of course you know if I'm a tiny bit snappy to somebody or my face doesn't look right or something then people are like didn't like your face and I'm just like ah! so but I'm doing it we're doing it we're doing it um yeah it's weird going about our day and now at least people are apologizing for my mom and being like, hey, really sorry about that. Or like people that send crappy emails are like, hey, really sorry about that. You know, whatever. But it's like, why can't humans just understand that every single person we talk to every single day is hurting from something? I'll never be able to wrap my head around it. But I just keep repeating to myself, get knocked down seven, get up eight, get knocked down seven, get up eight, get knocked down seven, get up eight. And focusing on Rodeo New York is what is keeping us really focused in the outfits and to be honest keeping my nails really cute because Nini that was her thing so I just like I've been just like living letting her live vicariously through me and being super savage um Nini was savage with a kind heart and I I go light on the kind heart when Nini would hit you with some savagery she would hit you hard sis I mean Nini would hit you hard like, listen, work on your fitness before you complain about all that. Or you need to work on your blah, blah, blah before you complain about all that. Um, she was savage. And we all know it because it was behind the scenes. And we tried to, like, edit her so she wouldn't, like, offend those of 2020. Like, Nene didn't care if you were gay, straight, black, white, yellow, purple, transgender. Okay. But Nene did care if you worked your off. Nene did care if you put in enough effort. Nene did not care about how much sleep you've had, how much money you have, because it doesn't cost a dime to be clean. And she would repeat that over and over again. So I'm just bringing in a little bit of the Nene savagery and it feels good. I'm excited to ride baby Flo. It's been a long 60 days. I'm just living the good life. I've never seen her just stand still.
this world champion saddle on her. I got on her back and I was so excited. And it was just another, just vouching for the system of meditation and visualization and just, we really can get through anything. Would you make it? Golly, play the baby music. Miss Ma'am? That's your horse hand. <laughs> that is nice. That is she approved. Nice. She approved. That is nice, Bobo. So on March 1st, I was told that I could ride her and I did in that world champion saddle and that was one of the greatest days of my life and Poppy got to feel a little bit of relief and got to like. We started to get some hope again. I wasn't going to save my mom from this horrible disease, but if I could give Poppy some hope and give us a plan going forward to try to make something amazing out of this year, I was going to do it. I was cleared to run her after one more inspection at the vet on March the 9th at just a little jackpot and I went third in the 1D. I would who cared like I didn't care to ever run her again. So to be able to run her and enjoy that time and make her run to the left <laughs> with no rock in her belly and without the guilt of like so how long does it take this rock to develop? And he was like, could be five years. I'm like, so she potentially won the world with this starting in her stomach. In March 9th when I went down that alleyway again, it was pure bliss. I didn't think it could get much better than that. But that's not all that 2020 threw at us. I'm not even gonna lie, I had to take a minute after I ran baby flow tonight and just like cry. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, it's cool that she's back and running and winning, but like this whole time, everybody thinks like my mom passing away was the thing that we were all going through. But the, the compound effect of baby flow went down, my mom was diagnosed with cancer, then my mom dies, then Mojo has to go to ICU, um, Alex gets broken into, um, my mom's dog almost dies, my dad goes in the hospital for pneumonia. Dad has multiple, uh, not the easy kind of pneumonia, the difficult kind of pneumonia, and he's 80. So we're gonna stay here until this gets fixed because I just can't even believe we're back in the hospital right now. I truly can't believe it. And I broke down last night because I just didn't think I could even bear to come in and go through it. The compound of all of this has just been overwhelming. And I'm so grateful for her. I can't believe that I got to run her. I can't believe that I even got to sit on her back. I don't care if she ever wins anything else, but she's telling me she wants to go win something. And with a horse like that, you don't just let them sit. So I'm gonna let her go win something. I just, uh, I'm overwhelmed with emotion and I'm just kind of cried out. I mean, my eyes are welling up, but I'm just, I'm just a little too fragile to just really go down into the deep moments of what this really means to me. But I thought she was gonna be dead.
know I was gonna tell a bunch of little girls that their hero wars had died. So young, but I don't have to yet. She's gonna go at some point, but it's not today. It is not today. I'm ready to go win something on her.